Good morning everyone. In the previous sessions of geomorphology, we always discussed about the two major forces that runs on the earth, that is the endogenic and the exogenic forces. And we have discussed much about both the endogenic and the exogenic forces. So the exogenic forces are those forces that operate on the surface of the earth. So these exogenic forces are always busy in removing the unevenness of the earth's surface and make efforts to level it down. And we call this activity of leveling of the earth's relief as denudation. Hence, denudation is the sum total of weathering and erosion. So in today's session, before going to the topic of denudation, we will be discussing about weathering. So what is weathering? The disintegration or the alteration of rocks in its natural or original position at or near the surface of the earth, either through the physical or chemical or biological processes which are induced or modified by wind, water or climate. We term it as weathering. Simply, you can define it as the weathering is the process of disintegration and decomposition of rocks in situ. So here, in situ refers to the weathering is a static process. So what makes a difference between the weathering and erosion? During the weathering process, the term in situ signifies that the translocation of the disintegrated or the alterated material occurs in the immediate vicinity of the rock exposure so that the rock mass remains at the same place. Hence, weathering can be distinguished from erosion by the fact that the erosion generally includes the transportation of disintegrated rock and soil away from the site of degradation. This weathering is a long process that takes hundreds of years to happen. Generally, weathering involves two types of changes in the rock. First one is the physical or the mechanical change, where the rocks are disintegrated either through the change in the temperature or maybe through the change in the frost action or through the biological or the wind action. The second type of change is through the chemical change. Here, the rocks are decomposed either through the static water or with the help of oxygen or carbon dioxide. The nature and the magnitude of weathering differs from one place to another and from one region to another region. Thus, the weathering of rock is affected and controlled by agents of weathering like lithological and structural characteristic of rocks, the slope of a region, the climate, the topography and relief. So let's look into which are the major controlling factors of weathering. The first one is the composition and the structure of the rocks. We all know that weathering involves disintegration and decomposition of rocks. Hence, the composition of minerals, joint patterns, faulting and folding largely determine the nature and intensity of weathering. Consider the case like that of a carbonate rock. A carbonate rock has more soluble minerals and hence they are easily affected by chemical weathering. Similarly, take the case of rocks with vertical strata. Such type of rocks are easily loosened or broke down due to change in the temperature or due to the frost action. At the same time, a rock having horizontal buds are more compact and are less affected by this weathering mechanism. The nature of ground slope. The rocks in regions of steep slope are easily disintegrated due to mechanical weathering and these weathered materials will be instantly moved down the hill slope. On the other hand, if you take the case of regions with a gentle and moderate ground slope, they are less affected by mechanical disintegration. The third factor is that of climate. 
climate is considered to be the most important factor of all types of weathering as each climatic type will produce definite condition for a particular type of weathering for example take the case of that of a chemical weathering which is more dominant in tropical humid areas because it has more availability of water and high temperature at the same time the mechanical weathering is less effective in those areas on the other hand if you take the case of a mechanical disintegration this type of weathering is more dominant in tropical and semi arid regions where the factor of chemical weathering will be very less the fourth major determining factor of weathering is that of floral effect or the natural vegetation the nature of weathering is also determined by the presence or absence of vegetation in a particular region it should be clearly point out that vegetation is partly a factor of weathering and at the same time it is a partly a factor of the protector of rocks if a region is having high vegetation those regions the rocks will be binded through the network of roots by the trees and thus they will be protected them from weathering and erosion at the same time the penetration of the rocks in weakens the soil and thereby breaks the rocks into several blocks now let's look into the different types of weathering process as we discussed earlier that weathering is the physical disintegration and chemical composition of rocks there are various elements like that of physical and chemical for weathering in addition to the elements of weather plants animals and even man himself are responsible for breaking this rock and this is being termed as biological weathering thus the weathering is of three major types the physical or the mechanical weathering the chemical weathering and the biological weathering it should be also noted that these all types of weatherings are intimately interrelated to each other so that it is very difficult for us to isolate one process from other take the case like that of a chemical weathering no chemical weathering will take place without any physical stress on it or the disintegration of the rock by temperature expansion or the thermal expansion does not occur in the absence of chemical process associated with the presence of water now let's look into the first type of weathering that is the physical weathering in physical weathering the rocks are generally broken by the physical force without any change in their chemical composition thus the physical or the mechanical weathering leads to the fragmentation and breakdown of rock masses into big blocks or boulders or through cobbles or into pebbles or even sand the physical weathering generally happens when the rocks are disintegrated either due to the change in the temperature or due to frost action or by wind action or due to unloading of rocks thus the various agents of physical weathering are insulation frost action pressure moisture and water and wind now let's look into the first type of physical weathering we know well that the heat received from the sun is termed as insulation thus the heat received from the sun results in the change in the temperature of rocks it is generally accepted that the bare rock surfaces are heated during the day time due to which the outer layers of the rocks get expands during the night time the rocks are cooled due to the relatively decrease in temperature and this leads to the contraction in the outer layer of the rocks this type of effect of insulation on the rocks can be best seen in the hot deserts where the diurnal range of temperature is very high the day temperature will generally suddenly shoots up in these areas while the temperature suddenly falls even to freezing point at night times 
the rock will expand and contract alternatively. This rapid expansion and contraction of rocks leads to cracks and joints in the rock. The rocks will split and will get broken into big blocks. This type of physical weathering is termed as block disintegration. It is not necessary that all rocks are good conductors of heat. There are some rocks which are not good conductors of heat. The outer surface will get heated quickly while the inner part still remains unaffected. The alternate expansion and contraction of the outer layers will be more than that of the inner ones. Such differential heating of outer and the lower shells of a rock mass will cause flaking. The outer layers are subsequently peeled off from the main mass of the rock in the form of concentric shells due to flaking. Such type of shattering of rocks is termed as exfoliation. Thus, exfoliation is also termed as onion peel weathering that refers to the peeling of concentric shells of rock due to combined action of heat and wind in hot, arid and semi-arid regions and also in monsoon life. This process can be found more common over the crystalline rocks. The physical weathering caused as a result of frost action. We know that the weathering is the disintegration of the rocks into large size blocks which can happen also due to freezing and thawing of water. Such type of weathering are more common found in areas of severe cold climate as well as in areas of high altitudes where the alternate freezing and melting of water inside the cracks in rock split them into fragments. We know that the 9 cubic inches of water turns about 10 cubic inches of ice. The conversion of water into frost or ice will increase the volume of water. This phenomenon is termed as frost weathering. Such type will develop a strong force in widening the crevices or the cracks in the rock by physical destruction over a period of time. Moisture and rain also plays a very important role in weathering. In moist areas, the rainwater acts as a lubricant and breaks the rock. When the rainwater drops on heated rocks in dry areas, the rocks will develop numerous cracks and are broken. The repetition of this mechanism causes spanning. Many rocks are formed deep into the interior of the earth under the combined influence of pressure and temperature. When the rocks above them are eroded away, these rocks are exposed and are released from high pressure. Due to the release of the pressure, the cracks are produced in the rocks and the exfoliation stops. Granites, massive sandstones, conglomerate and limestone are more affected by sheeting, spalling and block disintegration due to the release of pressure by the unloading of the upper layers. Thus, the removal of the incumbent load is termed as unloading. Now, let's move into the chemical weathering. The decomposition and the disintegration of rocks due to some chemical action can be termed as chemical weathering. Thus, chemical weathering is considered to be more important than mechanical weathering in almost all climatic regions. The chemical weathering will result in an increase in the volume that produces stress within the rock, lower density of materials, the particles of smaller size that will produce a larger surface for the chemical interaction and a more stable mineral. There are mainly two major end products for the 
chemical decomposition and disintegration. One is the residual such as clay and the other one is a soluble such as calcium bicarbonate which can be removed by solution. Following are the main process that constitute the chemical weathering. The first one is that of solution. Solution is considered to be the first step in the chemical decomposition and disintegration of rocks. Solution can be referred to the dissolution of soluble particles and minerals from the rock with the help of running water. Solution of the rocks mainly depends on the nature of the rock, the solubility of the rock and the volume of the solvent that is the water. Limestones are more prone to solution process which depends on the temperature, carbon dioxide and the content of water. When the rainwater will mix with the atmospheric carbon dioxide, it becomes active solvent and when it comes in contact with the carbonate rocks such as limestone and dolomites, it dissolves the rocks leading to weather. The solution of limestone and dolomites have given birth to a very interesting landscape known as karst topography. When a rock is exposed to atmosphere, the atmospheric oxygen present in the rainwater will get entered into the chemical union with its constituent minerals, especially like that of iron compounds. This results in the decomposition of rock leading to its crumbling into a powdered mass. This process is termed as oxidation. During the process of oxidation, the original color of the rock will get changed either into red or yellow or brown. This process can be compared similar to that of the rusting of iron. The chemical union of water with a mineral is termed as hydration. The process of hydration is particularly effective on some aluminum bearing minerals such as feldspar. On its chemical composition with water, the feldspar swells or increase in volume and this results in the outer shell which gets detached by the mechanical force of expansion. The product left behind is a residue of sand and clay. One of the best examples of deformation caused due to hydration is the transition of anhydrite into gypsum. Rainwater in the course of its passage through atmosphere will dissolve some of the carbon dioxide present in the air. This will turn the water into weak acid like that of carbonic acid which will act on the limestone rocks and this process is termed as carbonation. Thus carbonation is the reaction of carbonate or bicarbonate ions with that of minerals in the rock. Animals, plants and man himself are also responsible for the weathering of the rocks. Biological weathering refers to the decomposition and the disintegration of rocks due to organic materials of both flora and fauna. Simply, you can define as the weakening and the subsequent disintegration of rocks by the plants, animals and microbes can be termed as biological weathering. The earthworms and other burrowing animals such as rodents, rats will play an important part in the weathering of the rocks. As the burrowing animals burrow into the cracks in a rock and making it bigger and split the rock. The growing rootlets of shrubs and trees also exert incredible force as they work down into the crevices. As the roots of the plant expands, the cracks in the rock will also get expand and the rock will get weakened and breaks into pieces. Although the process is physical, the pressure exerted by these plants is termed as a biological process. So, I hope you have enjoyed today's class. For clarifications and queries, please post in your suggestion box. Thank you and have a nice day.